Keeping and growing a garden is a lot of work. So this year I'm trying a more lazy version of gardening and a lot of it has to do with what you're actually growing in your garden. And I'm gonna be going over my top five plants that I have in my garden that I love because they're a set it and forget it plant. Now, most of these plants are not gonna be from seed. You're gonna actually buy them a lot of times in the bare root fashion or potentially as a bush. And the main difference that we're talking about today is perennials versus annuals. And before we get into that, we really wanna break down what is an annual and what is a perennial. An annual is a plant that is only gonna last around one year. That means in its growing season, it's gonna go from the actual seed to the full growth plant. And at the end of that growing season, it is going to die off and it will not be able to come back again. This is something like a cucumber or a tomato plant where it really only has that one growing season. On the flip side, you have perennials. Most commonly, these are going to be flowers or trees. And these are plants that are going to live for two or more years where you actually plant it into your garden or into the soil. And for years and years, it's going to bear beautiful blooms, fruit, vegetables. And we're gonna be going over my top five perennials that we have in our garden. So let's get started. Our first one is going to be the asparagus plant. What I love about asparagus is they can actually grow for up to 20 or more years bearing this beautiful nutrient rich vegetable. We have a lot in our bed. They love a good sunny spot with well drainage and you can grow these in the ground. You can grow them in raised beds like we have and they will bear fruit again and again. Now you can grow these from seed and we do have some from seed in our beds. You can see that they're just a lot smaller and usually you're really not going to want to be picking your asparagus the first two years that it is in the ground. So if you grow from seed, it's definitely just a lot smaller and a bit longer of a process. But once you actually get it in the ground and it's growing, you're gonna get a nice thick asparagus. That's why we like to get ours as a bare root and I'll link some of my favorite down below so you can purchase some of your own. They're really easy to grow. And once you've gone ahead and have them in your garden, they will grow up. You'll get to pick them. You'll want to pick them pretty quickly once they're actually around pencil size or more, your size of your finger or more, nice and thick. And they have a nice good height to them. You can go ahead and grab them. If you don't get it in time, then you will just let it kind of go to seed. There's both male and female versions of asparagus. I definitely suggest getting the male version if you do have a choice there, because you're usually gonna have more focus on the actual growing of the asparagus and not so much focus on actually growing seeds and propagating more asparagus like you would get in your female versions of the asparagus. Our next one here is the strawberry. So we have a beautiful strawberry bed here. Now, right now it is about spring. What I love about strawberries is they usually stay a nice green color all year. So once you have your flowers, they will go ahead and actually start the strawberry from the flowers right in there. So anywhere there's a flower, you're most likely gonna have a nice, beautiful strawberry very soon. And they usually will last for years and years to come. So this bed right here, we started off with just six plants and they will go ahead and repli replicate themselves. So they'll usually start off with a mother and they will either do a threading to a second one, so they'll jump over to a second, or they'll just go from the center of the mother and create another plant. What's also really great about these, because they spread so much, they can be great ground coverage on a garden that you have and helping keep away the weeds because they will cover it for you and you'll also bear fruits. And not only that, you can give away some of yours. So when they do actually spread out, you can thin out your garden beds and move some of those little babies around to other spots, give them out to friends and share your strawberry love. We did also start doing pine berries this year. So any strawberry family plant is gonna be really great because they are going to come back year and year again. Now, it is nice to note that around three years of your plant, the strawberries are not going to be 
as intense in the growth so you might want to start picking out some of your older ones and replacing them with just some of the newer ones that are growing but because they're kind of replicating themselves you won't really need to worry too much about it so once we actually do see some fruits form we do actually cover it with some netting here because our birdies will come in and grab all that delicious fruit so you are going to need to make sure that you do protect these guys as well the next item that i love to grow and we actually have a full orchard of around 20 fruit trees in our orchard area of our lawn is fruit trees fruit trees are a great way to get fruit year over year this is a great perennial tree this right here is actually a patio peach tree so it is bred to be a smaller tree so we actually put it right into our garden because it's not going to overshadow all of our other plants. So if you do have a dwarf or smaller trees, you can plant them pretty close to your garden and it'll create a nice shady spot for your pups to lay down in. Or if you do have some shaded varieties of other things you're growing in your garden, this could be good to grow in that section. Now, some things to think about when you're deciding to grow trees is one, the size. If you do want a dwarf or a regular size fruiting tree, you need to look into what zones your fruit trees are going to be best in and if your zone aligns with that. We actually recently found out that we could grow pistachios on our property. So we are looking to get one. They're a really hard tree to find, but really excited to get that. And they're also a beautiful tree. What I really love about fruit trees is a lot of times they'll have that beautiful blooms in the spring. So you still have some nice pops of color and flowers right before you get your fruit. Another thing to think about is every type of fruit tree usually does have a freezing time where it needs to get below a certain degrees for a certain amount of weeks or months of the year. So you're going to want to make sure that your area aligns with what your tree needs. And lastly, making sure that you're planting it in the correct area in regards to sun, soil, and if it needs pollination from other trees or if it's going to be a self pollinator and not need another tree in order to bear a delicious fruit. Something else that we grow in our garden is berry bushes. We actually just added these beautiful little tags so that we know exactly what variety each berry bush is. We did plant these in containers and I love that every year we're going to be able to come out here and get fresh berries. These berry bushes are pretty new so this year we're going to just let them kind of do whatever they want. In the future we are going to put netting around them because we have a very big bird problem as you can hear some of the birds around me and they once they know that the berries are ready they come looking for them. But with the price of berries today, it is so nice to know that we're gonna be able to actually produce our own. And I do love that depending on the different types of berries, you can get some that look, will look really good within your landscaping. So we actually have a bunch of blueberry bushes right near our house and our patio, and we actually integrated it into some edible landscaping which is, I think, a really great touch. Something like blueberries, raspberries might be a little bit harder, especially if they do have any of the um, prickles on them. <laughs> I don't know why I can think of that. But there's so many glorious berries that you could be growing and adding to your garden and they're pretty low maintenance. They're most of the time gonna grow pretty big and great, get some nice berries in a cheap way and a really good food that you can preserve pretty easily by freezing within your freezer, just putting them into some nice freezer bags, turning them into jams or jellies, trying to use them throughout the year as much as you can, and also trying to use them in potentially other ways of canning and such. So really great item to add to your garden this year, if you haven't already. Lastly, an amazing plant that you should be adding to your gardens today if you haven't started, and these can be added by seed or by plant, either really works is herbs. I love having herbs right outside of my house that I can quickly grab and cook with. You can dry them out, you can dehydrate them and turn them into dried herbs and they're so great to just pass by and smell as well. There's so many that you can grow. I do warn you that some of them can get a little ambitious and take over so I do really like to have them in 
pots or containers so that I can contain them. The amount of stories that I have heard of mint, spearmint, peppermint just taking over a property is uncanny. It happens to so many beginner gardeners. So really watch where you do put your herbs. But a lot of herbs can grow outside pretty well. They will come back year over again. So this is our third time here with this uh, sage that we have here. But you can also grow them inside in a kitchen garden as well. So if you do wanna have them on your windowsill, that's another great way that you can be growing these and using them all year long because these will die back. Now, some herbs that we like to grow are lavender. It's a fragrant herb known for its aromic flowers and foliage. It looks really beautiful to plant within any landscaping. We have it in our front and the flowers are beautiful. This is actually similar to lavender. It has a very similar look, but this is salvia, um, which is a great, a great alternative as well. And what's really great about lavender is you can then use it. Um, I'll dry it out and use it to put in your sock drawer or use it as a nice scent as well. It's a nice relaxing scent that you can have. Thyme. Thyme is a versatile herb with small aromic leaves. It's a perennial that can tolerate dry, rocky soil and full sun. We have rosemary, which is a woody herb with fragrant needle-like leaves. It's a perennial in warmer climates, but can be grown as an annual in colder regions. Rosemary prefers well-drained soil and full sun. We have sage, which is a savory herb with gray-green leaves and a strong flavor. Oregano is a pungent herb commonly used in Mediterranean cuisine. Chives, which are a member of the onion family known for their slender grass-like leaves and mild onion flavor. Lemon balm is a lemon scented herb with serrated leaves. It's a perennial that enjoys moist, well-drained soil and partial shade. Whether you decide to add a orchard to your property to get some beautiful fruiting trees or shrubs, adding herbs to your garden or even to your kitchen, there are so many different types of perennials that you can be adding now to your garden as well as all year long, making sure that you know exactly which zone and when to actually plant them but they're a great plant that is great for the lazy gardener because you only need to plant it once and then maintain it throughout the years and you will be given beautiful fruits and vegetables for the years to come i hope this is helpful comment down below what your favorite perennials are and what you're growing this year we'll see you guys again next time bye